Hi, welcome to the Ultimate Sports Vlog Podcast. Today is Friday, February 23rd, 2018. A lot to get to today, including a scandal in college basketball that could very well impact the NCAA tournament and a bunch of different teams and players. Um, recap college basketball from the last two days and make picks for this weekend's big games. Recap the NBA games from last night and pick the nationally televised games for the weekend. Go over an NHL trade, or two NHL trades, an NFL trade, a possible big injury in Major League Baseball, and more. All right, to start this off, unfortunately, there's a scandal in college basketball yet again. Yahoo reported it this morning. Federal documents detail sweeping potential NCAA violations involving high-profile players in schools. Among the teams involved in this are big names. Duke, North Carolina, Texas, Kentucky, Michigan State, USC, Alabama, Kansas. Players involved. Michigan State's Miles Bridges, Alabama's Colin Sexton, and Duke's Wendell Carter. And this is um, really a big story. If more comes out, then I'll certainly talk about it on the podcast. And this... Usually when something breaks like this, it's serious. And what we saw with Louisville when that story broke a couple months ago and then it turned into this big whole thing and Patino lost his job and um, they had to get their 2013 National Championship taken away from them. I didn't discuss that on my previous podcast, but that's a pretty serious um, antic. And then... Speaking of antics in college basketball, something I want to get to real quick before I recap last night and Wednesday night's games. Alonzo Trier of Arizona tested positive again for drug substances. So he is out perhaps for the rest of the year. We'll see how long it takes to get it out of his system. Maybe he does come back. We'll see. And good news in college basketball, Michael Porter Jr. is cleared to resume basketball activities. It's remained to be seen whether he comes back and helps Missouri make the tournament or he sits out and holds out for the NBA draft. On to results in college basketball. A lot of key ones. I actually did pretty well with the picks from the last two days. I went 12-4 and four for Wednesday, 7-3 and three for Thursday, and the combined 19-7 and seven overall in the last two days. That's better than what I've been doing. On to the results I want to get to. South Carolina defeated Georgia by a score of 66-57. That's a game I actually didn't pick on the podcast, but it's worth noting because Georgia's in the mix for an at-large, and South Carolina has played spoiler with a lot of teams this season, such as Kentucky and Florida and Auburn. A game I did pick on the podcast, and I got it correct. Number four, Xavier defeated Georgetown by a score of 89-77. Xavier improves to 25-4. and four. Georgetown drops to 15-11. and 11. Xavier might be headed for a one seed. Georgetown probably to the NIT. We'll see if they make a little bit of a run, because a lot of teams have been losing, and that's been opening up the doors for teams that really haven't been in the mix like a Georgetown, like a St. John's. Maybe Providence gets back in the mix a little bit. So keep an eye on Georgetown as a sleeper. Number one, Virginia defeated Georgia Tech by a score of 65-54. Virginia improves to 25-2. and Georgia drops to 11-17. and Them Georgia Tech, I mean. Um, big win for Virginia. They're headed likely for the number one overall seed. The only way they don't get that is if they lose a couple games down the stretch and then they lose in the uh, ACC tournament. And I had Virginia on the podcast. Virginia Tech beat Clemson by a score of 65-58. I had Virginia Tech on the podcast. Virginia Tech improves to 20-8. and And number 15, Clemson, drops to 20-7. and I think Clemson's fine, and I think Virginia Tech is on its way to the big dance. Number 10, North Carolina defeated Syracuse by a score of 78-74. Big win for Carolina. They're on a, a roll right now. They've won seven in a row. Or it might be six in a row. They're now 22-7. and seven. Syracuse drops to 18-10. and 10. Syracuse can still get in at large. Um, 
it's going to be difficult for them because they have a, a tricky game that they're not likely going to lose on tomorrow night. And then Carolina's just been on a roll. Six straight wins. Dark horse candidate for a one seed if things break right. Um, big win for the Wolverines of Michigan as the number 17th team in the country defeats Penn State by a score of 72-63. I had Penn State on the podcast. I was wrong. Michigan improves to 23-7. Penn State drops to 19-11. and We'll see about Penn State. They're right there on the bubble. This isn't a, a fate sealer by any stretch. Maybe they go on a run in the Big Ten tournament. Maybe they pick up a big win over the weekend. We shall see. Michigan probably headed for somewhere like a five seed at this point. Oklahoma State defeated number six Texas Tech by a score of 79-71. Big win for the Cowboys as they improved the 16-12. and 12. Texas Tech drops to 22-6. and six. Oklahoma State's making a late interesting case to be an at-large. They have wins over Texas Tech, West Virginia, Kansas, and Oklahoma. So keep an eye on the Cowboys. And I had Texas Tech on the podcast. I was incorrect. Number 13, Wichita State defeated Tulane by a score of 93-86. I had Wichita State on the podcast. They improve to 22-5. Tulane drops to 13-14. and 14. The Shockers... Probably a four seed at this point with the big win over Cincinnati, and they have another game against Cincinnati at home coming up. And if they win the AAC tournament, maybe that gets them to a four seed. TCU defeated Iowa State by a score of 89-83. I had Iowa State on the podcast. I was incorrect. Big win for the Horn Frogs. They improved the 19-9. Iowa State drops the 13-14. and and then TCU is probably going to be in the 8-9 game. I feel like they... Them and Virginia Tech, I feel like, are two teams destined for the 8-9 game. Number 12, Auburn defeated Alabama by a score of 90-71. to Big, big win for the Tigers as they improved to 24-4. I had them on the podcast. Alabama drops to 17-11. Auburn might be a 2 or 3 seed at this point. Don't rule out a 1 seed if they win the SEC tournament and if... Teams like Villanova, Xavier, Michigan State, Virginia drop some games down the stretch. So that's your case for Auburn as a one seed. Alabama, I believe, still gets into the dance, even though they have 11 losses. They have a lot of good wins, and that, I think, matters big time. Marquette defeated St. John's by a score of 85-73. I had Marquette, I'm sorry, I had St. John's on the podcast that's an oops. They dropped to 14 and 14. Marquette improved to 16 and 11. Marquette's in the at large pitcher. We'll see. St. John's, to me, has to win out pretty much to get in. I don't think they're getting in as an at large, so they have to win out to get in. Number three, Villanova defeated DePaul by a score of 93 62. I have Villanova on the podcast. They improved to 25 and 3. DePaul drops to 10 and 17. Villanova's likely headed for the one line. Number five, Duke defeated Louisville by a score of 82-56. Big win for Duke. They improved to 23-5. Louisville drops to 18-10. Duke's in play for a one seed as well. I think if they win the ACC tournament and not Virginia, maybe they'll get it. Um, We'll see with the Blue Devils. Two notable results worth noting, but kind of irrelevant. Wake Forest defeated Pitt by a score of 63-57. And Minnesota defeated Iowa by a score of 86-82. A game I did pick on the podcast, number 19, Tennessee defeated Florida by a score of 72 or 62-57. I had Tennessee on the podcast. They improved to 20-7. and seven. Florida drops to 17-11. and 11. Kansas State defeated Texas by a score of 58-48. I had Kansas State on the podcast. Big win for the Wildcats. They improved to 20-8. Texas drops to 16-12. Texas is right on the bubble for Maine, and Kansas State, I think, is in for good. Number 20, Nevada defeated San Jose State by a score of 80-67. to Nevada improves to 24-5. San Jose State, 3-23. I didn't realize that they were that bad. Boy. Um, and last but not least, in terms of the Wednesday games, USC defeated Colorado by a score of 75-64. I had USC on the podcast. They improved to 29 Colorado drops to 
15 and 13. Big win for the Trojans to keep themselves on the bubble. They need, I think, three more wins, and uh, that does include Pac-12 tournament play. They need to win a couple games in the Pac-12 tournament for me, the uh, Trojans of Southern Cal. Thursday's games, as I mentioned, I went 7-3, and three, and it would have been 7-2 and two if not for Seton Hall Providence. Seton Hall Providence would have was a Wednesday game. I would have went twelve and five for Wednesday, seventy seven and two for Thursday. But funny story with Seton Hall Providence, um, they had to postpone the game on Wednesday. They actually suspended it in the middle of the game because of a slippery floor. They finished it off on Thursday, and Seton Hall got the victory on the road to improve the nineteen and nine. Providence drops the seventeen and eleven. I think uh, both of these teams are in the mix for at large. Is Providence probably looking at eleven right now? Seton Hall, either a 9 or a 10. Um, Providence is the more um, intriguing team to me because they have some difficult losses, including a bad home loss against DePaul at home. Meanwhile, they did beat Villanova at home. They have the Villanova win to hang their hat on, and I did have Providence on the podcast, and I was wrong. A result worth noting, a game I didn't pick, Wisconsin defeated Northwestern by a score of 70-64. to both of these teams have underachieved this season. Um, staying in the Big Ten, a game I did pick for the podcast, number nine, Purdue, defeated Illinois by a score of 93-86. I picked Purdue on the podcast. They improve to 25-5, and and Illinois drops to 13-17. Another candidate for a one seed if uh, Michigan State um, falters somewhere or a Duke or a Virginia. So there's another... Uh, Dark Horse 1 seed candidate Purdue, or I should consider them more than a Dark Horse at this point. Number 11, Cincinnati defeated UConn by a score of 77-52. Big win for Cincinnati. They improved to 24-4. UConn drops to 13-15. Cincinnati's probably looking at a 3 or a 4 right now. And if they get a, the Wichita State win and the win the AAC tournament, they're a Dark Horse for a 2 seed. I think the Bearcats are really good. Number six, Gonzaga defeated San Diego by a score of 77-72. Gonzaga barely won this game. They improved the 26-4. San Diego drops to 17-12. Gonzaga's another candidate to get a one seed if things go wrong with Virginia or Michigan State or Xavier or Villanova or Purdue or Duke or somebody along those lines. Memphis upset number 23, Houston, by a score of 91-85. Um... Memphis improves to 17 and 11. Houston drops to 21 and 6. That's a bad loss for uh, the Cougars, who are in play for an at-large. I still think they get it because they did beat Cincinnati, and that will resonate on their resume as well as the win over Wichita State. Number 14, Arizona defeated Oregon State by a score of 75-65 in overtime. Arizona improves to 22 and 6. Oregon State drops to 13 and 14. I had Arizona on the podcast. I had also had Gonzaga, but I did have Houston. Stanford upset Washington by a score of 94 78. Stanford improves to 15 and 13. Washington drops to 18 and 10. Washington might be staring at the NIT right now. A couple bad losses for the Huskies. Maybe they'll get some wins in the Pac-12 tournament to make that up. Utah defeated UCLA by a score of 84-78. Big win for the Utes. They improved to 18-9. UCLA drops to 19-9. Both of these teams in the pitcher for at-larges. I think Utah's on the rise. UCLA's had a couple weird losses. I think UCLA gets in because they have that Kentucky win. And that'll be good enough for them. Um... Number 22, St. Mary's defeated Pepperdine by a score of 75-61. St. Mary's improves the 26-4. and four. Pepperdine drops to 4-25. and 25. I think St. Mary's is probably headed for a 6 or a 7 seed. Um, uh, last but not least, in terms of Thursday's results, Oregon defeated Arizona State by a score of 75-68. Big win for the Ducks. They improved to 18-10. and 10. Arizona State drops to 19-8. I think Arizona State's headed for the 8-9 game. Oregon might be right there on the bubble. I need to, uh, maybe on Monday's podcast I'll do another mock bracket. I have a lot that I want to get to next week, and uh, stay tight with me. 
because I'll get to all that at the end of the podcast. Picks for the weekend. One notable game tonight, and that's number 18, Rhode Island, hosting Dayton. Dayton in his first year with Anthony Grant, not great. Um, That's what happens when you lose a great coach like Archie Miller. Rhode Island's going to win this game by double digits. Um, E.C. Matthews should play. Um, Almost lost to LaSalle the other day, but I think they win big here at home. Saturday's games, a lot of them. I picked 33 games for Saturday. First one, number 17, Michigan at Maryland. Maryland absolutely has to have this game. No doubt about it. Um, They're in the mix for an at-large. And I believe they'll get it. And I think Michigan can afford to lose this game. So give me Maryland at home to upset the Wolverines. The Paul hosts Marquette. Give me Marquette on the road. Providence at Georgetown. Big game for both teams, especially Providence. But I think Georgetown picks them off here. Seton Hall at St. John's. Big game for both of these teams. I think it's a bigger game for St. John's. And it's at Madison Square Garden, so give me St. John's at home. Baylor at TCU. Give me TCU at home. Number 19, Tennessee at Ole Miss. Give me Tennessee on the road. Louisville at Virginia Tech. Give me Virginia Tech at home. BC at Miami. Give me Miami. LSU at Georgia. Give me Georgia. Number 13, Wichita State at SMU. That's a trap game for the Shockers, but I think they win against SMU. Oklahoma State at Texas. Give me the Longhorns at home. USC at Utah. Give me the Utes at home. They need that game more. Number 3, Villanova at Creighton. Trap game for the Wildcats. This would be great for Creighton if they were the pickoff Villanova. But I think Villanova wins by five points. I think Villanova barely wins at Creighton. Notre Dame at Wake Forest. Give me the Irish on the road. Georgia Tech at number 15, Clemson. Give me Clemson the bounce back here at home. They need that game. South Carolina at Mississippi State. Mississippi State's in the at-large conversation with a couple nice wins, most notably at Texas A&M recently. I think they have to have this game at home. Give me the Bulldogs at home. Trap game for the number one team in the country, Virginia. They're at Pitt. Give me Virginia on the road. Don't be shocked if Pitt shows up for this game because I remember West Virginia went in there earlier in the year and they showed up for that game. So don't rule out at least... A competitive game for maybe a half or three quarters of the game. Texas A&M at Vanderbilt. Give me A&M on the road. They need that game. That'd be a bad loss if they lost that game. Best game of the weekend, number eight, Kansas at number six, Texas Tech. For the Big 12 title, you know what? Give me Texas Tech at home. I really like how Chris Beard's team's playing. They're going to be ready. I think they pick off Kansas and put themselves in the conversation for a one seed. Washington at Cal, this is a must win for Washington with a couple bad losses recently to Stanford, to Oregon State. I think they get the win here on the road in a close game. Number 21, West Virginia hosts Iowa State. Give me the Mountaineers at home. Oklahoma hosts Kansas State. I think Oklahoma finally Snaps that losing streak. Number five, Duke hosts Syracuse. Give me Duke big at home. Stanford hosts Washington State. Give me Stanford at home. Middle Tennessee hosts UAB. Middle Tennessee is now ranked, so the rule on my podcast is where I picked... Pick games involving ranked teams. Middle Tennessee is 24 in the country. And give me them to get a big win here at home against UAB. Alabama hosts Arkansas. Big game for the Crimson Tide. They need this one more than Arkansas. Give me Alabama at home. Number 22, St. Mary's hosts Santa Clara. Give me St. Mary's at home. Number 6, Gonzaga at BYU. Trap game for the Bulldogs, but I think... 
they get the win on the road by three points. BYU has a knock, a knack of knocking off St. Mary's and in Gonzaga. Don't forget BYU beat Gonzaga at Gonzaga last year. Arizona State at Oregon State. This is a real hard call. Oregon State picked off Washington a couple weeks ago. I think they can absolutely win this game. But Arizona State needs this one. I'm going to say Bobby Hurley's team gets it done and gets a big win on the road. St. Bonaventure at VCU. Trap game for the Bonnies, but I think they get it done against VCU. St. Bonaventure, I think, has to win these games down the stretch and at least make it to the conference championship if they want to get an at-large bid. Missouri at Kentucky. Give me Kentucky. Number 12, Auburn at Florida. Give me Florida, the paw off. Oh, it's not an upset. Florida's favored in this game, but give me Florida, the pick off Auburn here. And last but not least for the Saturday games, number 14, Arizona at Oregon. Give me Oregon at home to pick off Arizona without Alonzo Trier. Sunday, I have a couple picks for you. I have eight of them. Number 11, Cincinnati hosts Tulsa. Give me Cincinnati. Number two, Michigan State at Wisconsin. Trap game for the Spartans. I think they get it done. Although, don't rule out an upset here. Wisconsin just upset Purdue. And Michigan State is, again, dealing with some turmoil with this off-the-court news that broke the other day. Or or was it today? It was today. Oh, my God, I'm getting my days mixed up here. Game worth noting between two bad Big Ten teams, Illinois and Rutgers. Rutgers will probably win that game. East Carolina at number 23, Houston. Give me Houston at home. The bounce back from that loss against Memphis. Minnesota at number 9, Purdue. Give me Purdue. Memphis is at UConn. That's an irrelevant game. But I'm not picking it on the podcast. I'm going to say UConn picks off Memphis because Memphis will have a letdown after the Houston game. Again, that's not a pick towards the podcast. This picks towards the podcast. UCLA at Colorado. Trap game for the Bruins. Bruins need to win this game. Give me UCLA on the road. Number 20, Nevada hosts Colorado State. Give me Nevada at home. Biggest game for Sunday. Who would have thunk it would be Penn State at Nebraska? Give me Nebraska at home to improve its at-large chances. Although, it would be big time if Penn State were to get this game. Number 25, Florida State at NC State. Give me NC State at home. And that's it for the picks towards the podcast. One more game worth noting that I'm not picking towards my picks. Northwestern is at Iowa. NBA, some interesting results from last night. I'm actually going to, for now on, do the results of all the games. But just do my picks towards the nationally televised games. And here we go. The Knicks defeated the Magic 120-113 to 113 in the battle of two teams that are tanking. Um, and the Magic essentially get um, the quote-unquote win if you're counting wins towards tanking. And they got back Aaron Gordon and Nikola Vucevic in this game as well. The Nets aren't tanking. But they did lose to Charlotte, one eleven ninety six. I think Charlotte should be tanking. But no, they got a win here at home. Um, the Wizards beat the Cavaliers, one ten one oh three in the first part of the TNT doubleheader. Big win for the Wizards. They didn't have John Wall. They improved to thirty four and twenty four, and now are one back in the loss column of the Cavaliers for the three seed in the East. That's incredible. I don't think it's a bad loss or that bad of a loss for Cleveland. But they got to get this win tonight against Memphis, that said. Um, a team that's tanking did a great job at tanking, the Bulls. The 76ers get the win, 116-115. The Bulls had a big lead, and um, they blew it. And that's good for their tanking cause. Um... And the Sixers improved to 31-25 and 25 as they keep their hopes of a 
six seed or better alive. I think they're going to be at least a six, maybe a five. Um, and then and another tanking team got a loss. That was the Kings, courtesy of Russell Westbrook hit in a game-winning three at the buzzer. The Thunder had a big lead, and they blew it, and the Kings came back. And the Thunder got the win, 110-107, as I said. With one second left on the shot clock, the Thunder with the win and Russell Westbrook with the game winner at the buzzer. And the Thunder improved to 34-26. and 26. They're probably looking at the five seed in the West right now. Um, and then you have the Golden State Warriors who defeated the Clippers by a score of 134-127. Give the Clippers credit. They hung around in this game. Um, they dropped to 30-27. and 27. Golden State improves to 45 and 14. And them and Houston will battle it out for the one seed. And I picked the Cavs and the Warriors on my podcast, so one and one for the NBA picks. Tonight, um, you have the Pistons hosting the Celtics. Um, see if the Celtics can get off the snide. The Pistons um, need to get going after this Blake Griffin trade, and they have to make the playoffs. I mentioned that on my previous podcast. The Pacers host the Hawks. The Hawks are tanking. The Pacers are surprisingly in the hunt for the playoffs. Um, So they'll probably get that win. Hornets at the Wizards. The Wizards better not have a letdown here after their big win in Cleveland. Um, Bucks at the Raptors is interesting. Um, See if the Raptors can hold on to that one seed. In a game that I'm picking towards the podcast, ESPN, the first half of the doubleheader, you have the Timberwolves. At the Rockets. And I think the Rockets get the win here at home. The Cavaliers are at the Grizzlies. Um, The Cavs need to bounce back from that disappointing loss against the Wizards. The Heat are at the Pelicans. The Heat need this game to keep their playoff hopes alive. Because I think Detroit's right there behind them. Or going to be right there behind them. So they need to pick off some teams. And take advantage of teams with big injuries like the Pelicans, who are missing DeMarcus Cousins for the rest of the season. Um, The Spurs are at the Nuggets. Um, The Spurs, oh, a big story I forgot to mention that I'll bring, I'll talk about it now while I'm on the Spurs. Kawhi Leonard, probably done for the season, even though he's cleared to play, because Greg Popovich came out and said that he'd be surprised if. Leonard played again this season. This is this looks sounds like something that's going to get ugly. I won't be surprised if he's on a different team next season, even though how great he is. And I haven't heard him come out and say that he loves it at San Antonio and I love Popovich. None of that so far, and that's troubling for San Antonio as they try to hang around for home court advantage in the playoffs. The Clippers are at the Suns. They need to bounce back here and get a win against a team that's tanking. Trailblazers at the Jazz. Big game. Big game. I wish ESPN had this game on two teams vying for playoff spots in the West. Portland owns one of them. The Jazz aren't there yet. And the Jazz are going for 12 straight tonight. And in the second half of the ESPN doubleheader, to, um, well, one team that's tanking and another team that um, doesn't have a first-round pick. And that's the Lakers hosting the Mavs. I think the Lakers get the win. As I mentioned, the Mavs are tanking. Mark Cuban even admitted it. There's so much of turmoil with the Mavs right now. Lonzo Ball's back for the Lakers. Let's see how he plays. So give me the Lakers at home. Saturday, you have the Magic at the Sixers. Grizzlies at the Heat. And then your primetime Saturday primetime game, uh, the Thunder at the Warriors. I think the Warriors are going to win. And they'll win by double digits. You got the Bulls against the Timberwolves. So that's Zach Levine's return to Minnesota after Jimmy Butler went back to Chicago. So that's an interesting one. Um, you have the Celtics at the Knicks. You have the Trailblazers at the Suns. You have the Mavs at the Jazz. You got the Lakers at the Kings. And then Sunday you have... Um, Pistons at the Hornets, Pelicans at the Bucks. 
And then the two games I'm picking for towards the podcast because they're on national TV. The Spurs are at the Cavs. This is just a fascinating game. Does San Antonio get a quality road win or does the Cavs get another big win on national TV? I'm going to say Cleveland gets the win and LeBron's the best player on the court. I'm going to say the Cavs by double digits. I think the Spurs are headed to disarray with this Kawhi turmoil. and um, I just think the Cavs are better than the Spurs, period, end of story. And in the 76ers at the Wizards is a nice game on primetime on ESPN. Give me the Wizards at home. And then the other game on Sunday night, which ESPN could have aired this and made this a 10-30 game and had, would have had a Sunday night doubleheader. And I like it, too. The Rockets at the Nuggets. Yet again, an opportunity for the Nuggets to prove themselves against a quality opponent. A couple hockey trades I want to get to. Michael Grabner was traded from the Rangers to the Devils for a second-round pick and a young defensive prospect by the name of Jaeger Rykov. A 20-year-old, he was a fifth-round pick in the 2016 draft. Great deal for the New Jersey Devils. They improved their front six in terms of their forwards. Um, He should be playing on their second line. He'll score a lot of big goals for them. And Ray Shiro probably won't win the GM of the year in hockey, but he's certainly a pretty darn good GM with two great trades he made this year. First for Sammy Vatanen, previously of the Anaheim Ducks, and now Michael Gravner, previously of the New York Rangers. Derek Broussard was traded from the Ottawa Senators to the Pittsburgh Penguins. Nice deal for Pittsburgh. It's crazy that Pittsburgh has so many big contracts on their plate. Um, They gave up a 2018 first-round pick, Ian Cole, and the 2016 second-round pick goalie prospect. I think it's a nice haul for Broussard. Um, and Broussard will help Pittsburgh. He'll probably play on their second line, maybe even their first or their third line. Um, I'm fascinated to see where Broussard fits on the Penguins. And then you have an NFL trade that happened today. Marcus Peters was traded from the Kansas City Chiefs to the Los Angeles Rams for draft picks. Um, I think it's a great trade for the Rams. That improves the secondary and the Chiefs. They, I really don't like what they've done so far, although the Smith trade made sense because they had Mahomes in the wings. Now they have to improve their secondary in the draft and in free agency with the trading away of Marcus Peters, although they did get Kendall Fuller in the Smith trade. Um, Big injury in baseball, um, Brent Honeywell, Prospect of the Tampa Bay Rays tore his UCL, likely headed for Tommy John surgery. This is a big blow for the Rays. He was a lot of people's um, possible rookie of the year pick. And now he has to sit out a year. And the Rays look like a team that's going to be possibly tanking this season. Although it's not like the Marlins as bad as tanking because they still have talented players on their roster such as Chris Archer and... Um, even Blake Snell still around. Their closer Alex Colomb still around. Um, they traded a lot of their bats away, but um, I still don't think the Rays are as bad as say the Marlins. Although it could be that bad if they trade away Archer and Colomb. Um, and today, uh, Major League Baseball spring training games began. And that's an exciting time. So that means baseball season's right around the corner. I'll probably dedicate a whole podcast to Major League Baseball predictions later in March before the season starts. Um, and speaking of like weekend podcasts and plans, I might do a podcast Sunday night previewing some uh, conference tournaments for college basketball. And then... Doing some other things. Monday, I'm going to obviously recap the weekend in the NBA and college basketball, make picks, go over some uh, the NHL trade deadline. I might do a, so- a podcast solely on the NHL trade deadline because that's on Monday. Um, I'm thinking about getting guests a guest on for Tuesday. We'll see about that. 
Um, Wednesday's going to be recapping NBA college as usual, going over the news. That's for usually Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays on my podcast. And then this Thursday, um, that's March 1st. I don't know if I'm going to have a podcast that day or not, but I might get a guest on that day as well. I hope you guys have a great weekend, everybody.